What's up, YouTube fam? Welcome back to my channel. It's Nicole. If you're familiar with my channel, you know about nine months ago, my daughter and I, in this video here, we installed these faux marble peel and stick floors in the kitchen. Super cute, super, uh, you know, aesthetic as far as the color scheme in my kitchen. But now it's ran its course and it's really time to remove these. So that's what we're doing in today's video. Okay, so before we remove these, here is the nine month um view they look pretty good for the most part i really hate taking these off because i really love the color but it's ran its course like the tiles are shifting you can see right here the gap where you can see the original floors underneath and i think some of this came from when i had issues with my refrigerator and i had to um, install a new refrigerator some of the tiles shifted at that point and it's just been a mess ever since i just feel like it's so low budget to have these tiles shifting um, nobody has said anything coming into my kitchen, but I, I just know it's ran its course and it's time to remove these. And that's what I'm going to walk you guys through today. So today we're going to say bye and get to moving these off. Okay, so to remove your peel and stick floors, you're going to need this Goo Gone in a little spatula type thing. Um, I ordered this from Amazon. It came with two bottles of the Goo Gone and this little spatula. It's plastic. If you have something that's more steel, um, like a stronger material, that would probably be better because um, this thing broke down. <laughs> I, I cannot use it again after this process. But you see this first piece here came up super easy. So all you do once you have the little spatula thing, you just scoop it up under the tile like this and pry it up. Some tiles were extremely easy to remove. Some took a little bit of you know tugging and then some were um, extremely hard to move. But it just required a little more. If you just pry around all the edges, then it came up. Most of them removed in one piece. So I think, you know, if you wanted to clean and reuse these or repurpose these for something else, you could. But the ones that were extremely hard to remove, those broke into pieces. So you wouldn't be able to repurpose those. But overall, you guys, like if you want to install peel and stick floors, it's a great solution like these. I feel like for the cost, I spent like under $150 to install these. I feel like it was maybe like $120. It lasted me a good nine months. It could have lasted me a full year, but I just was over the shifting. I think that, you know, the better you apply, the more, the better you apply them, the more you take your time to apply them, the longer they'll last. Um, but the shifting is what made me... Um, you know, say it's time for them to go. So right here, I'm just prying. This one was a little bit hard, but not too difficult. Like I said, once you use the little scoop thing, this one was very hard. So I kind of like had to, you know, go around it, use a little bit of elbow grease to pull it off. And then boom. So overall, super easy to remove. So I think, um, when people, you know, apply these and, you know, they say it's renter friendly, it's super renter friendly. Obviously, I own my house. I'm in my first home. I can experiment, do what I want. If, if I mess up the floors, it's OK because I own the place. However, if you are a renter and you do this, you're going to be in good shape because once you watch this whole video through, honestly, my uh, my existing floors, they look even better than they did before because I really took the time to clean them. I said, since I'm removing these cute floors, I'm going to make sure I clean my floor, my floors super good so that they can, you know, be as visually appealing as possible until I figure out if I want to lay another type of peel and stick floors. If I want to paint, there's an option to like paint and stencil your floors. I may do that or I may just do a more permanent floor, you know, get some real workers to come in and do it. So I'm not sure. Comment below. Let me know what you guys think I should do. I'm just thinking more long term. If I want to rent this house or if I want to sell it, I can't have these peel and stick floors, especially not looking like this. So it was time to go. But super easy because my peel and stick floor video is my most popular YouTube video. You guys liked it. I think it was super easy to understand. I really wanted to show you guys the removal process because it's super, super, like super important to know and understand how to remove it before even applying them. I wish I had seen this video before I did it. I just was like, you know, I'll just, you know, take a chance with it. 
whatever happens, happens. So overall, you guys, it took me about 30 minutes to completely remove all of these. You can literally see um, how easy it is. You can see like um, when my hands, like the little veins in my hands are straining, you can see <laughs> the ones that were a little bit harder to remove. But when I say some, as I got to the part of the house, I mean, the part of the kitchen where nobody steps, it was like almost like they weren't stuck to the floor at all. But like the middle of the kitchen where everybody's like gets the most foot traffic, I feel like those were the harder to, you know, hardest to remove. Not sure why. Not sure if, you know, it's heat from people's feet that, you know, made it adhere more. I'm not sure. But that's just from my experience. Um, here up to this point, I didn't have on gloves. There is some stickiness on your hands, but I ended up getting gloves like halfway through this process or maybe 75% of the way through the process. And honestly, I, it, the gloves got stuck and it was just a mess with the gloves too. So either way, the, the adhesive is not hard to come off. So if you want to use gloves, use them. Just make sure maybe they're cloth gloves instead of like anything that's like kind of plastic where the adhesive is going to stick to when you get frustrated like I did. So you can see the glue coming up right there. Just want to speed this up a bit. This is one I had on the gloves and the hand part was a little sticky. But this is the floor. This is the kitchen. You can see the aesthetic is gone a little bit since I removed my peel and stick countertops. Make sure you check out that video if you haven't. I'll link it above. But this goo gone was also good for me to... Um, remove any remaining adhesive from my kitchen counters that may have still stuck around from that. So check out the removal of the peel and stick countertop video. I'll link it above. So now I'm going to just go ahead and spray this goo gone all over the floors. This stuff a little goes a long way. I, I kind of OD'd with spraying this because I wanted to make sure it was like no stickiness left on the floor. But after finishing the process, I realized that I didn't need as much. I, I used like 75% of the bottle. I didn't need that much. Um, so a little bit goes a long way. And especially, you know, because this stuff is super slippery, definitely something I learned. I didn't need as much as I used, but I, I wanted all the stickiness to be gone. So after I sprayed it, I let it sit for 20 minutes. You definitely want to let it sit so it could really break up the adhesive that's on the ground. And then I just took this little cleaning device, Swifter, whatever device you want to call it. And then I just kind of like, you know, went across the floors, scrubbed the floors and um, got the adhesive up. Some spots, it took a little more elbow grease, but every single bit of adhesive came up off the floor. When I say this stuff is super, super slippery, be very careful. I think that's why I didn't let my daughter help me with uh, the removal because I almost bust my butt a bunch of times and stuff is super slippery. So don't have the kids, the dog, anything around and just be very careful when you're walking on this. So scrub the floors, all of these little lines you see, these black lines, that the, that's the adhesive from where the tiles were lined up. So it just takes a while. I had to put the camera down for some parts to really get into it, but it all came off. There was nothing left. I'll show you guys in a second, but you're going to just kind of scrub the floors until you get everything up. Want to give you guys another little close up so you can see how much it really does work. Now, if you see little black dots here and there, some of the original existing floor, the tiles chipped a little bit, so that's something that obviously can't be removed, it's not adhesive. But all, all in all, this um, everything, every bit of adhesive came up off of these floors. You guys, especially my ladies out there, if you're really into DIY projects, home projects, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I try to provide tips and hacks on, you know, just how to make sure things run smoothly in your house. So this is the finished product, you guys. When I say the floors look really good, I'm happy. All I wanted was well-structured, clean floors at this point. It looks good. There's some shine. Um, one thing I didn't know is that once you finish with the... Um, 
swifter make sure you go in with some mild soap and hot water to really get up any of the extra residue because the stuff is slippery and just mop, give your floors a good mop dry them off and then they'll look as good as new like these i'm okay with them but now i just have to figure out the aesthetic of my kitchen now what i want to do next to it and i will be sharing that with you guys soon i hope you like this video see you guys next time